Hi guys, welcome back. Thanks for being here. I know this video is late. I'm trying to get them out on Monday, but sometimes it's Tuesday because adulting and life, blah. <laughs> I just got done listening to the podcast for episode three of season two, Near Wild Heaven. And yeah, this one is a wild one and it was cool to hear Bevan and I, on the podcast, it was really, uh, funny to hear about the stripper and the tattoo below the knee. <laughs> that was funny. Because, <laughs> yeah, this whole episode, I do remember being a little cringeworthy at times. <laughs> oh, wow. I totally forgot that, like, that whole opening scene. Yeah, Tim with the open phone book. And for those of you who don't know, that was our Google back in the day. <laughs> Uh, but just acting like he's ordering food, but it's strippers. And then, you know, um, <laughs> Brooke just like taking the towel from Nathan's waist and Peyton being like, oh, it's so much more fun when you haven't seen it. And being like, oops, sorry, Haley. It's like, that was a little awkward. Does anybody else get like a shiver down their spine every time Dan calls Lucas son? And... When Dan apologizes to Lucas, I almost want to believe him. Almost. I do agree with Lucas. It is scary that it seems like Dan meant his apology. Dude, Tim is like the devil, like, uh, like on Nathan's shoulder. Like, oh, that ring doesn't stop you from who we remember who you used to be. It's like, what a terrible friend you can be sometimes, Tim. You suck. Oh my god, Keith, when he's like in the chair at Dan's desk at work, and he's like, Ugh, and then he sees the cut out of Dan, like, ah, and he's like, eh. <laughs> and Lucas walks in. I swear, I just, it's funny, but it's, it's like painful, because like, ugh, Keith, you should have left and never looked back, dude. When Keith looks shocked about saying, I don't know what drugs they're pumping Dan full of, but he's almost polite. <laughs> Is that like the only time we ever hear anybody say that about Dan? <laughs> Haley and her, I'm just straightening up the place, angry cleaning for your party. We're going to have a skanky ho here. Want it to be looking nice. Ah, uh, Keith's coffee cup from another place, clearly illustrating to Karen that he is not coming around her place anymore. Sad, confusion, hurt, but understandable. Such a an, an heavy moment when Lucas finds the pictures and articles about him that Dan has kept throughout the years in the lockbox. It's like, ooh, feeling conflicted now. I'm really glad that Haley called Lucas out when he's like, okay, I'll sacrifice myself and go to the bachelor party to keep an eye on Nathan. It's like, she's, oh, how heroic of you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> how many teenage wives would be so supportive as to even leave ones on the counter for you and your boys and the stripper coming over? <laughs> I agree. I always thought it was a little weird even for Brooke who has access to many credit cards that she could afford and you know this party bus and like have this access to this lingerie place and uh, private access to it it's like come on oh my god Dim really is the perfect nickname for Tim a homemade porno with his stepmom oh gross the teenage lingerie show is definitely written by a man. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Keith and Karen's conversation about him needing to, like, basically cut her out of his life. Ugh. Another good example of why Keith really should have stayed away. I mean, I know he was being nice to come back and help Dan, but Dan doesn't deserve it. Oh, God. I see it as justice that Tim got arrested. Really, that was hilarious. <laughs> it's ironic. The boys are supposed to get a stripper, and Haley got one. 
Okay. I do love the moment when Deb walks into Karen's cafe and Karen's like, oh, is everything okay? And, she, and she's like, let me grab some coffee. And Deb's like, Dan wants to come home. Let me grab, Karen's like, let me grab some liquor. <laughs> but Karen speaks the truth. Deb really needed to do what was best for her. I agree. Oh my God. How many times did they have to film that? Like when Haley runs for the stripper pole and just slips and falls into the chair. Ouch! I find it wild that Nathan knew about the pictures in Dan's desk and then he's like, yeah, that's why I hated you all those years. And But I did like, you know, Lucas basically telling Dan, you know, I'm not going to be your stand-in Nathan because that's essentially what it feels like terrible time for credit cards to be cut off. Ooh, awkward. And then the stripper shows up that late. It's like, ugh, come on. Nick and Jessica are not the best example to Haley and Nathan. Of course, they didn't know that at the time, but the way Haley talks about finding Nathan and the one she wants to be with, and you can just see in, in Peyton and Brooke's faces, like, Oh, hmm. Reality check? I love that Lucas, like, offers the job to Nathan. And then we flash to Nathan with the stripper. And this episode always... I remember being so freaked out with the way they timed this, this part of the episode and making you think that Nathan cheated. Oh my god, it killed me. <laughs> How cute are they? Ugh. I swear I was so stressed out watching this episode originally, and I was just like, no! But it's such a moment of growth for Nathan in this moment, where he's just like so tempted, so easily tempted, it could have been so easy, and it's just such a beautiful moment of his growth, I love it. Oh, scheming Dan and Deb. Again, this kind of illustrates why they were probably kind of good for each, you know, why they were together. Um, but it's like, that's that little glimmer, you know? He's like, I have a heart attack, Deb, not a lobotomy. It's like, they're so trying to break up Nathan and Haley, and it's just ugh, it's kind of gross. I mean, I get the whole teenager shouldn't get married thing, but like, I don't know. It's just, it's Neely, back off. I love seeing Nathan report to work and Keith with his prideful smile. It's just like, Keith is such a great guy and Karen's going to go to college and, you know, Lucas is going to be there for Dan, but he's letting him know it's not going to change. You know, those pictures in the lockbox don't change anything. And again, it's just like, it's so hard to believe anything Dan says, especially after he's like, I had a heart attack, not a lobotomy. You know, it's like, you're still you. This didn't really change you. <laughs> and of course, we see the real money problems start with Brock. Okay, that's it for this episode. This was a shorter one for sure. But I think there was just a lot of retrospective moments. Just, you know, just with the party and the girls kind of realizing what Haley has and they don't. And, um, you know, Bevan is always a fun addition. So... It's going to be more fun when we see her, when her and, him, her and Skills get together, and hopefully she'll be back on the podcast. But yeah, I'm not sure if they're taking a break for Christmas, so find out. <laughs> if they don't, I will see you next week. <laughs> Either way, guys, have a fabulous holiday, and I will see you soon. Bye!